happened because one of our fellows, Math Potts, um, who is heading up Camarados, an amazing project, encouraged me uh, at this before COVID to go out and talk to people about what we were doing. He said, this is, you've got some great stuff here. You should go and tell people and get them involved. And so I started to nervously do that. And I was very lucky to meet Bob and Ajani, but also uh, people like Joe Duran from Lankelly Chase, who's also been a great help to us. And so this is partly, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a description for five, 10 minutes about the three co-hosting organizations and our relationship and the work we're doing. And then there's going to be some sessions. So I'm going to put some slides up uh, about that. Um, and hopefully you can see that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be talking about, and oh, that's a reminder, Wendy, we should probably, everybody should mute except when they're talking, because to avoid feedback and other interference. So we're going to be talking about the work of these three organisations in six rooms, and then there's a, and then we'll come back together and reflect together as part of the losing control network process. But this is certainly a chance for us to share what we've been doing for several years now, and really it's an opportunity to encourage people to think about whether you'd like to get involved with us in some way, would you like to work with us in some way. Uh, the picture here on the uh, right of the screen, anybody who's been to Sheffield will be familiar with, and because it's up on the way up from the railway station, and it's the name of Sheffield's brilliant magazine, Now Then. Uh, we stumbled across Now Then, my wife and I, um, several years before we actually met the people at Opus Independence who were behind this piece of um, journalistic brilliance. Uh, and, and, and my wife does like to remind me that for years she said, you should go and work with these guys. They're <laughs> really good. <laughs> but but uh, so, um, yeah, let's. The, the underlying philosophy of, of the work of, I think, these three organisations and the things we've helped create uh, was put together. One of our friends, Tim McKeelty, put this little graphic together. It may seem a little bit silly to you, but to me, it's perfect. You know, why can't we be different and equal? That is what citizenship means for us. When we talk about citizenship, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about passports. We're talking about every unique individual being able to live a life of meaning and of significance and being respected for what they are. And, and actually enjoying the fact that human beings should be different from one another. That's one of the kind of beautiful things about the world. We're not interested in, in, in kind of creating artificial boundaries and, and limitations. And, um, you know, one of the things behind our work has been about probably exploding the notion that countries are a very good way of thinking about how we make the world better. That's not to say countries don't have a purpose or a value, but we sometimes seem to get a bit trapped by those, that way of thinking about things. Um, I, I was talking to one potential funder for our work, uh, but in the end, her foundation said, well, you're just too local and too global. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I can understand that. I think from some perspectives, that's maybe we are too local and too global, but I rather love that about what we're doing. I, I, to, to me, that's, that's the wonderful thing. I'm based in Sheffield. I love Sheffield. I love my city. I love my neighborhood. Um, but I also love connecting with people in New Zealand and Spain and India and Africa and talking about what they're doing and learning from them. I, I, can't, I can't see that there is anything as such as too local or um, too global. I'm going to come back to this at the end so you don't need to worry about this, but these are our six rooms. There's, it was hard working out what to cover in the, in, in the who to introduce you to, anybody who's turned up today, um, but this is how we've broken it up into these kind of six themes, the work we're doing to grow Citizen Network as a global cooperative, the work that we're doing uh, led by James and Johnny around 
the development of the UBI lab network and um, Opus's work in alternative independent media, the work of Catherine Hale, Steph Benstead on um, chronic illness inclusion, the work that Angela Fell is leading on neighbourhood democracy and Clive's work at Tumbledown Farm. Um, Chris is going to talk about some of the kind of really groundbreaking work he's doing on reorganising social care and Glyn about the amazing peer support work of PFG Doncaster. And finally, but not last, but certainly not least, Wendy, Karen and Kelly will talk about the idea of the keys to citizenship and about the importance of including everybody in the citizenship journey. So that's what we're going to, you're going to have a chance to go and meet some of those folk and talk to them. Um, this is just a few slides and thoughts about this all encompassing network that we're building. I, I was very inspired, one of my heroes is a guy called John O'Brien and, and when I was telling him about what we were doing and I was explaining it, I was using the metaphor of trees. And he said, you know, don't you, that trees communicate underground. That, and then I discovered later this concept of the wood wide web and the fungal networks that allow trees to communicate and also allow, uh, help the soil transform energy um, into nutrients for trees. Um, I, think, I think this is a really interesting kind of metaphor for thinking about what what we've been doing. We've been growing networks of trust and communication all around the world and in localities that I think are helping people tap into the energy that's often missing. Um, this, this little image is from my back garden because I was then thinking of a picture of three trees and I googled three trees and I didn't like any of the images I saw. I've got three little trees in the back of my garden so I went and took a picture of them but those are the three trees we're, who are hosting. Opus Independence is actually the oldest of the organization, founded in 2008. Um, the Center for Welfare Reform a year later in 2009. Um, and then Citizen Network was set up in 2016. And uh, yeah, what, what we're trying to do here is encourage you to join in and, and help out with the work that we're doing. Um, this gives you an overview of what um, of the three different kind of platform organizations, and I'm not going to go and read through all of those different things. Um, we can share this stuff afterwards. But as you can see, this, this work is of considerable uh, spread. We're, we're starting to connect with lots of different people in lots of different places, some in, in, in specific cities like Sheffield, but much of that work is now spread to Manchester, some right across the world with kind of global audiences. And we're doing work that has real impact. The, the fact that the Welsh government recently declared a commitment to pilot basic income just last week is very much um, a part of the work that's come out of UBI Lab Network, UBI Lab Cymru, um, and many other positive uh, developments. It's very having real world effect, this work. Um, and we're working in all sorts of ways. Just this afternoon, I was just talking to uh, somebody who wants to support the sharing of poetry through Citizen Network, poetry about citizenship. So we've got all sorts of things from big policy things to small things that help people's imagination uh, grow and develop. And these are some of the things that we've done going back to Opus Distribution, which involved making sure that people got information in, in the city and providing an information sharing service very directly, non-digitally through to very recent things like the creation of Citizen Network TV uh, and many other things in between, some of which we really can talk about. Um, and here's, here's a kind of picture of some of the various logos. Many of these things are flourishing and fine and, and going off in new directions. Some of these things were experiments that didn't work out so well. The Campaign for a Fair Society morphed into the Learning Disability Alliance England which itself then became the foundation for Learning Disability England. So some things change and some things are experiments, and, um, but all of this work is, um, I think, rather beautifully interlinked. Some of it has a kind of viral impact. So there are now, I think, Johnny, you'll probably correct me, every time I ask, there's one more than I remember, but I think we're up to 40 UBI labs now. Uh, this, this growth has come through a very intentional strategy 
to make it easy for people to get involved in, in spreading the word, in campaigning, in mobilizing support. The census work is very much focused on um, independent research, citizen research, citizen thinking, and making it easy to distribute sometimes very, very detailed things. Steph's book, Second Class Citizens, is I think 300 odd pages of very detailed analysis of government policy. Some things are much simpler than that. Um, but what we're seeing is we're providing an opportunity for ordinary people, for professionals, for people doing the real work. Um, people, not the people getting all the money, but the people doing the real work, coming up with new ideas, new practices, giving them a platform to get their ideas out there. And there's like over 1,200 uh, items in the census library at the moment, all freely available. Here's the, uh, this year's program. This is the seventh festival debate that's launched um, and you know an amazing program of events, the biggest independent political festival in the UK and also an integral part to the Emerging Citizen Fest network that's now reaches seven cities. Again, something else that has just been developed between us, um, but is growing in strength and reach. Uh, Citizen Network has uh, 800 individual members and 207 group members. So these are organizations or associations, some very large organizations, some tiny organizations, who've joined Citizen Network all around the world. As you see, there are some places where there are a lot of uh, red blobs and there are some places with very few, but again, all of this has been done with very limited resources, people being drawn together by values and shared practices and trust and commitment to the idea of citizenship and equality for all. I think behind these, logos and practices and projects are uh, a set of strategies. I don't, I'm not suggesting in any sense, when I, I came up with this list, it was, I did it quite quickly, uh, just thinking about what we, what we have been doing. And I'm sure that we've got a lot still to learn about how to do this stuff well. But I think the kind of thing we've done is, is we've made it easy for people to join in. If you've got a little bit of energy, it's easy to join in. It's easy for people, if you, with a little bit of intention, to start sharing audiences and sharing content and make things grow bigger. We've been designing platforms for change that is led by citizens. And we've been connecting globally, not just for the sake of it, but because actually that global connection makes people more powerful locally. Um, just this week, We've been training people in self-directed support in Italy, Greece and Spain by connecting them to people who've been doing things in Scotland that are, are really cool. And so they learn things. And then what that process leads to is us able to share back more learning and feed that back. And through that process, people become stronger and the change becomes stronger. We've been supporting independent research, the work of the chronic illness inclusion community that you'll hear about if you join that group is amazing uh, and, and probably the leading example of this in our community. But there's also some other great research, independent researchers doing really amazing work who've been looking for a home, looking a place, a way that they can publish their work. We're also trying to make it easy for people to share good practice and get good ideas and easily move things forward. And that's very much at the heart of the neighborhood democracy work that Angela's leading. And I, I think a big part of it is just helping people have faith and trust to start cooperating better, helping each other better. When you hear from Glyn about the work of peer support, at the heart of that is people helping people. And, and there is nothing more powerful than that, I think. So this, these three slides come from Esther Ortega, who's actually the Spanish coordinator of Citizen Network and also an amazing graphic artist. Um, and, but these are key elements, you know, we're, we're, yes, we're talking about big ideas. Yes, we need to come together to do that, but we also need to keep it personal. It also needs to be something that's an individual thing. It's about people's passions. It's about love in a way. It's all really about love and trying to change the world in a way that um, 
all about communicating with love and supporting things worthy of love. And it is about networks, which is not the normal way of organizing things, but is a very powerful way we think of organizing things, very different to the normal hierarchical structures that, um, that dominate so much of modern life. But we think there is a way in which these networks can become just really powerful. So we think we need to work together to encourage a new attitude and ethic, to test new practices, structures and platforms, to advance citizenship for absolutely everyone and to tackle the real and urgent challenges we all face. This is a poster from, uh, I think that was in New York, I just thought that was really cool. Um, so, you know, we, we hope you'll be inspired by some of the ideas you'll hear about in the, in the six sessions. Um, if, you, if you want to take any of those ideas away and use them in your work, that's brilliant. But even better is if you could come and join us. So these are our six sessions. And I think uh, Ajani is going to kind of take over from me so I can stop. Shall I keep that up, Ajani, or shall, do you want to use the one on your slides? So that is helpful if you keep it up. So okay. now we're gonna, we're gonna move on to the breakout rooms. And we're gonna test something new maybe for some of you, but Zoom now lets the participants choose the room that they want to go to. I don't have to assign you to a room. So I'll open the rooms and we'll be able to select, there'll be a button for you to select your room. If you don't manage to do that, no problem at all. Just stay here in the main room and let me know where you wanna go. Either you can just show me with your hands, you know, one, two, three, and I'll allocate you or you can just pop it in the chat and then we're gonna allocate all of you um, to the rooms, yeah? I'm gonna open them now and one second, I have opened the rooms. 